So I happened to get a loaner from the dealership because my regular cab uh, 23XLT is in for service. Happened to get this back, which as you can see is a 2023 STX. And I thought it was interesting um, from a regular cab to four-door owner, which is what they call crew cab in the Ford world. So I'll give you a quick run through of it. And at the end, I'll have the price breakdown and see uh, what does the dealer equip their vehicles with. First thing we'll see up front, there is no camera. It's got the STX grill that everyone knows. And your tow hooks. That's really about it up front. You got halogen lighting. If you take a look up here, you got, it's gonna be hard to see, 75th anniversary sticker and just the little camera up front. And that is your lane keep assist, which I'll get into more in a second. And come down here, take a look. Still got the active air dam. And I found that these wheels and tire combos are actually pretty nice with the Wrangler Territories. And I actually like this wheel quite a lot. I think it looks good. It's machined uh, aluminum. Um, one thing I did know, I looked all over, not a single three peak symbol. You would think with all these um, siphons on here that it would have a three peak rating, and it does not. So they're simply mud and snow tires. Some people care about these edge guards. So those are both there and there. And they're not the big ones that hang down. And we'll go back. Got blacked out badging on the side. Take a look around. No, f no inner fender liners. No camera up top. Simple halogens. Simple bed lined bed, no lights, nothing of that sort, no tailgate step at all. Come back, and there's the back end. Does have, of course, your backup sensors and normal halogen lights. No blind spot though. This truck has no blind spot whatsoever, which is a surprising, surprising to me. There's your logo, and then of course on this side is the same look. So go ahead and take a look in the back. Here's our key. It's just a standard switchblade style key. Here. So it's the same actually as it is on my XLT. Take a look in here. Door is the same. This is the rear door, so I'm not familiar with the back seats of these trucks, but normal, hard plastic. This is all hard plastic here. This is a leather wrapped here, um, leather wrapped piece. Speaker, some storage trays, cup holder. Uh, let's take a look all the way in the back. We have one, oh, if I can open it, 12 volt here. And then down here, surprisingly, we got USB-C and USB-A connection with a little light. And then vents, which is nice for your passengers. And then the seats, pull out of here. Simply fold up like that, and you can fold them down by pulling the lever if I could do it one-handed, and then, then they're down. That's about it. There is no underseat storage compartment whatsoever here. It's all just carpet, uh, which is an option, by the way. Not all XLs come with carpeting. So we'll go ahead and go over passenger side real quick before we do that let's take a look at the mirror so no blind spot oh in this but it does have a little con convex mirror here to help you see um, uh, nothing special with that mine doesn't have that take a look at the door hard plastic here leather here um, and then this kind of glossy black I would call piano black almost material um, and then down, it's the same. This is kind of similar to the XLT. I don't think there's much difference in the door here. And then we'll pop over. So let's talk about these seats real quick. So first off, the seat, and this is the exact same as the driver's seat, only has two positions adjustments. Either move the seat rest forward and back or move the seat forward and back. There's no lumbar support on either side uh, or anything other than what I just mentioned. So let's take a look at the seat. So 
my XLT came with a grayish, no texture seat. Uh, I'm not sure what they exactly call it, but this one has a weird texture on it, both the front and on the bottom here by where your thighs would rest. And it's bolstered normally. Um, the headrest does not move. It's not an adjustable headrest. It goes up and down, but not forward and backwards like some of the fancier ones. I've actually never seen this texture. It actually extends all the way up and through. And that's about the seating situation. There is nothing eventful there. So we can climb in, same hand grip here, same flag there. So let's talk about what the STX also has. So it's this nice silvery, um, kind of reflective color. It sparkles all the way through the truck. So that's nice. Um, you do not have the button here that opens the top glove compartment. That's like on the XLTs and higher. It's just like the rubber piece that moves in and out, which is a ridiculous part of Ford's cost saving, but that is the case. So that does nothing. Glove box, standard glove box. Yep. And same as on my XLT, you got 12 volt USB C, USB A. And then we'll go over the top. Nothing here. Same rubber pads. Nothing different there. Uh, mirror is manual no auto dimming mirror here and you have a single mirror here no light up here nothing eventful also just a sunglass holder and then your light controls and then we'll come over to the center stack so the center stack is the same screen as i have in my truck it's the i believe it's an eight inch it actually works perfectly fine i have no issues with it the 24s will however have the 12 inch and they get rehaul redesigned. So you got auto start stop. This does have auto start stop on it. It's got only a front camera, traction control off, and then your typical controls. No auto climate whatsoever in this vehicle, all manual. If you do, however, click it like this, it'll turn on max AC or max defrost. And that's the only kind of automatic type control you'll see in this vehicle whatsoever. So that's that. So let's go over to the driver's seat. And take a look at what we have over there. Okay. More into the center console here. You have a typical USB-C, USB-A power. And then what surprised me is I was under the impression that all great, uh, crew cab trucks had a shifter in the middle that folded down it's completely empty with this weird slot in the middle and cup holders here it actually has a column shifter just like my uh, xlt regular cab does so that was pretty surprising and then you got this big center console with this leather wrapped top and this really deep right, this thing is huge take a look i mean just using that as a reference that's you know foot and a half maybe it's pretty big so you can fit a lot of stuff in there um and even on the sides you've got more storage which is kind of neat um you don't have that on a regular cab because you have a jump seat so let's look at this absolutely no mirror the driver is not allowed to look pretty you cannot look at yourself so you've got to hop to the passenger seat if you try to beautify and then we'll look at the steering wheel. This is not a leather wrapped steering wheel. I think it's just a rubber compound. Honestly, it doesn't feel that bad. It's textured. Does the leather feel a bit better? Sure. Uh, does it matter? I don't think it matters at all. Normal buttons. These are the same as on my truck. And then you come over here and see, it doesn't of course have the Copilot 360 assist where it'll drive for you. It has, so let's talk about lane keep assist. This really does nothing. <laughs> it's such a fake thing. Um, I tested it on the highway. It doesn't pull you back like you would expect a typical lane keep assist to do. It simply vibrates the steering wheel. That's it. You can go over that line and it'll just vibrate for you. It doesn't pull you back. I looked all over in settings and I found so far nothing to modify that, at least in the uh, radio has display. I didn't find anything. So we'll go ahead and power it up. Take a look. Build Ford Tough. You got your 75th anniversary there. 
So this has a small screen with full, fully analog gauges in every, in every position. And it's quite small, much smaller than XLT, which has a digital gauge cluster that goes all the way up and around to include those gauges. So you can see there's some options, calm screen, which is nothing, eco coach, which I didn't find it did anything. I hit okay, nothing shows up. So I don't know what's going on with that. That's the fuel average. I reset it when I got it. I've only really driven around town in a little bit on the highway. So not too much there. That's the fake lane deep assist. And then some just basic info. Go through the menu quick. This thing is slow, by the way. There's a good second or two delay between me clicking the button and it actually doing. So there's your inclinometer, engine hours, this is a very new truck. I mean, look, 1,200 miles. Power distribution, seat belts, auto start stop. You can turn it on and off there if you want as well. Let's look at towing. This is just gonna be your trailer light towing status. Uh, there's a sway option in there. Vehicle maintenance, oil life, tire pressure. So nothing eventful. Let's take a look at our settings. Go to vehicle settings, neutral tow. So nothing there of interest. Uh, this is a very boring screen. There's not a whole lot here, but that's what you get. Um, typical stock here. Nothing eventful there. Come over to the side. It does have your bed light, auto headlights, and then uh, this is your brightness here. It doesn't have the mirror uh, spotlights, which would be here. Uh, and then of course you are uh, e-park emergency brake, park brake, whatever you want to call it there. And more into the stack, we have your trailer brake controller, your 4x4 select, of course no 4 auto, you gotta get a lariat in order to have 4 auto, and then your drive mode, so let's take a look at drive mode. So it's kind of gives you some <laughs> options here, you got a few, you can take a look at those and what it's got. But I actually was shocked to see it had drive modes. And then something that is, was even more shocking is I cannot believe the dealer has a locker in this. <laughs> I will show you the build sheet, but that was specially ordered. So it does have a locker. And that's about it. It was pretty uneventful uh, <laughs> inside the vehicle. So let's take a look here at our build sheet. So here's all the things you get standard up here and let's see what they added on so it is of course just a 4x4 with a v8 um, and then the 10 speed auto with tow uh, and then your black sport cloth those are all your options if you'd like to read it and we'll come over to what they added so i was surprised the dealer added some of these so here's your locking axle that they added they added the carpeting because Carpet is not standard. Uh, vinyl flooring, to my knowledge, is actually what comes standard. And then the STX appearance package, which adds a lot of what you saw. And then all these other items. Trailer tow, which I was surprised it had. And then it's got a 36 gallon fuel tank. That's pretty sweet that the dealer specially ordered that. There's those sport cloths, so that must be the special texturing on the seats. Uh, and then the bed liner. So I'm surprised, so the dealer paid you know, all this extra money. These must be desirable options, I'm guessing, when they go to resell this truck. Um, I understand that a locker would probably be very desirable to have, as would a tow package and an extended range fuel tank. These are probably all um, very good options I would want in my truck as well. Here's the total price. So you could see price, discounts, 54, almost $55,000. For instance, my XLT, Regular cab fully loaded with every option was around, I think it was 51, and then after discounts um, and a few other things, I got it to around 49, 48. Take a look at fuel economy for your 5.0 V8. So, not bad. 22 on the highway. That's pretty sweet for a V8. Vehicle score for crash ratings, and that's about it. All right, if you guys have any questions, let me know. This, of course, the screen is very basic. You know, the same screen that's on the regular cab.